Is the M1 MacBook Air still worth it in 2025, which is more than four years after it got released? Apple doesn't even sell this product anymore. They sell the M2, the M3, and they're planning to launch the M4 this year. But you can still buy the M1 on third-party sites like Amazon, where it's an absolute steal selling for between four to six hundred pounds or dollars or between 40 and 60 thousand rupees in India for either new or as good as new refurbished units. So even though it feels crazy to recommend a four year old product, in this video, I'll do a simple logical breakdown to explain why I think the M1 MacBook Air is still one of the biggest hidden gems, the best value buys in 2025, especially for people just starting out like students or those who want a casual home laptop to browse and watch stuff and get simple everyday tasks done. I'm Akshay and let's get into it. First, here's the TLDR. There are only four differences that matter between the M1, which is four years old, and the M2 Air, which Apple still sells. First, the M2 processor is slightly faster than the M1 on paper, but in real-world testing, it doesn't make any perceptible difference to most users unless you're a super high-end video editor or a hardcore gamer playing heavy-duty games. Second, the designs are quite different with the wedge shape of the M1 versus the rectangular shape of the M2, which of course is a personal choice on aesthetic, but it makes no difference to performance. If anything, the M1 actually feels slimmer and more iconic Apple versus the M2, which has the same design language as all other laptops in the market. Third, the webcam quality, which is a bit subpar on the M1, which is a 720p laptop versus the M2, which has a full HD 1080p laptop and is definitely a bit of a compromise if you buy the M1. But it's one that you can live with and even fix a little using a trick I'll tell you about in this video. And finally, the last difference is the screen, which is comparable, but brighter and slightly bigger on the M2 versus the M1. Now, in addition to this, there are a few issues and problems that have been discussed a lot by reviewers and users across the world, like the hard drive speed on the M2, which is slower on the M2's base model, but works fine on the M1. So this is actually a plus for the M1 over the M2. And then there's also the ports, which are kind of bad on both the M1 and the M2, and a few other small things that I'll go through in detail in a minute. And finally, before we go into the deep dive, do take a minute to absorb the price difference between the M1 and the M2. You're gonna end up getting the M1 for almost half the price of the M2. That's enough for you to buy AirPods or an Apple Apple Watch or any other product that you like to go with your M1 Air, which actually adds a ton of value to your life. And given this really big difference, we aren't looking for just small incremental upgrades to justify buying the M2 over the M1. We're evaluating if we're okay to give up another brand new Apple product like the AirPods or the Apple Watch, which would be highly useful to you. Okay, now that we've cut through the clutter and you know all of the factors and differences that matter, let's actually deep dive into them to help you decide. First, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. The process and the performance of the M1. The M1 MacBook Air has as well the M1 chip with seven GPU cores, eight GBs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage in the base model. And by contrast, the M2 has the M2 chip with eight CPU cores, eight GPU cores and the same eight GB of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Apple claims that the CPU in the M2 is about 18% faster and the GPU is about 35% faster than the M1. But in all real world testing and for most users, this difference is not perceptible. Unless you're playing high-end graphic games or doing really high video editing for most everyday tasks that most of us need to do like email apps, video conferencing, using the web browser, all at the same time even, the M1 chip is blazing fast. Even for light video editing, for light coding, the M1 chip works great. The real upgrade that you might want to get is not the chip. It's actually to bump up from eight gigs of RAM to 16 because eight may not be enough if you plan to code and compile or do some serious video editing. Now, the other advantage of the M1 is that the base 256 GB storage model has great speeds on data transfer. The M2 by comparison has created a world of controversy by having a really weird base model with only one NAND chip and hence it slows down the data data transfer speeds if you move things around on your laptop or copy from a thumb drive. So once again, this is a win for the M1. Now second, let's look at the design. The M1 has that familiar wedge shaped design, which definitely feels thinner at the front where the wedge shape comes into play. Whereas the M2 is slightly thinner than the M1 at the other side where the hinge sits. So I guess you can call it thinner. Now you choose which design you like better. 
but this definitely isn't a major difference between the two that people should pay money for. If anything, given the place where we hold the MacBook is mostly in the front, the M1 wedge shape will make it feel thinner for sure. And I've always felt there's something minimalist and Scandinavian about the design of the M1 versus the boxy design of the new M2 and M3 laptops. And for me, that actually makes the case to get an M1. Just like I'm hoping that my hard work on this video makes the case to get your support by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. I'm working really hard to give you guys better and better video reviews. So thank you so much for your love and support. And I'd love to answer any questions or hear your thoughts in the comments below. Okay, third, let's talk about something that many reviewers don't focus on much but really matters to the everyday user nowadays. The webcam, the camera that you're going to use for FaceTime and Zooms and Teams and Google Meet calls, which makes up almost a third of our day nowadays. The M1 MacBook Air has a 720p cam versus the M2 Air's 1080p. This might seem like a small upgrade, but to be honest, the webcam on the M1 Air really isn't that great. It's about acceptable. Have a look at what MKBHD said. Still a pretty garbage quality 720p not even 1080 webcam. This is what that looks like. Ouch! Look, let me be honest. I think it works fine. It won't dazzle you. It's not the best in low light, but it works fine. It's definitely subpar for a laptop nowadays, but this is also a super cheap laptop. I also checked out what other folks on the internet found to compare with my experience. And as you can see, the difference is there, but you can live with it. In fact, some reviewers say that it produces a clean image despite being only 720p. So it's a compromise, but not a deal breaker. And look, if it really matters to you, wait for the next sale and just get an external webcam to clip on. But if you really want the convenience of the best webcam built in, then that might be one reason to buy the M2 because its video camera is truly excellent. Oh, and if this bothers you, I actually have one more solution. Apple software now lets you use your iPhone as a webcam. So all you have to do is clip it on the laptop or keep it down on a stand and boom, you have a better webcam. Okay, fourth, let's talk about the screen. Between the MacBook Air M1 and the MacBook Air M2, the display is slightly smaller at 13.3 inches for the M1 versus the 13.6 inches on the M2. And given that the laptops are the same size, the M2 squeezes in a larger display because of its edge-to-edge -edge design. This is definitely quite nice. I have the M2, which I use for most of my writing and editing, and it's nice to have an edge-to-edge -edge display, but there's nothing wrong with the M1. Unless you put it next to the M2, it's a classic case of not missing what you haven't seen yet. They both have the same resolution at 2560 into 1664 native at 225 pixels per inch and there's no difference in quality. The M2 does have the higher brightness though at 500 nits versus the 400 of the M1 which does tend to make some difference if you're actually working outdoors but no noticeable difference inside the home or the office. So the big difference here is do you work outdoors a lot or really want that modern edge to edge display? Unless the answer is yes, which I imagine it won't be for most of you, then there isn't a massive noticeable difference. Definitely not one worth paying for. Now, one of the limitations of Apple's MacBook Airs is the ports, which is slightly worse on the M1 versus the M2. The M1 basically has three ports, two USB-Cs and one headphone jack. Given that one of the USB-Cs is taken up by the charger, you basically have only one left. This is an issue if you need to connect more than one thing to your laptop. For example, a mouse and a flash drive, or a flash drive and an external monitor, or a mouse and an external monitor at the same time. This is a problem. This needs you to use a USB hub, like this excellent Satechi one that I use every day. A hub like this would cost anything between 50 to 100 pounds or dollars or three to 5,000 rupees for a good quality one, which will add to the price of the M1, but it's still so much cheaper than the M2. The M2 MacBook Air in contrast has the same ports, but the only difference is that it has a MagSafe charger, so you get to use both the USB-C ports at any time. But honestly, I have the M2 Air and I still use a USB hub because some of the things I connect my laptop to still use the old USB-A port, uh, I need an HDMI cable, I even pop in a memory card from my camera from time to time. So frankly, unless you have exactly two USB-C compliant devices that you specifically want to connect and nothing else, I would say the M1 isn't very different from the M2. They both suffer from the same problem of having very few ports. And as good on the MacBook Air M1 as it is on the M2, you get the same all day battery life uh, that people buy MacBooks for, the Apple warranty, the storage options, the excellent keyboard and trackpad. And all in all, I think Apple and Tim Cook have created a blessing and a curse in the M1 MacBook Air. It was too good to improve on much. So the M2 is more about smoothing things out and using things like the M2 chip for marketing 
marketing. And if you have the money or are a super pro user and really care about the webcam quality, then of course, go for the M2. And why just the M2? Go for the M3 or wait for the M4 later this year. But if you want a good value deal and you want to use the extra cash to pick up something else that's used, like a pair of AirPods to use with your brand new MacBook Air, I'd go for the M1 till stocks last, either new or refurbished from Amazon or from third party sellers like Back Market, because any way we look at it, it's still a killer deal in 2025.